Sorry, the uh, video cut out for a second there. I don't know. So I'll just label this as part two. But if you watched part one, uh, basically, I had just got done, uh, had gotten done uh, making the click lemon image uh, function. And I just copied the conditional. And it's set up the same way down here for set view elements. The only thing I did differently was, um, I mean, I didn't bring it from one stage to the next in the conditional because that's done above in the um, click lemon image function. So the set view elements were basically just setting the view elements. Uh, so when the image is clicked in the select state of lemonade state, um, the lemon image set image resource is going to be the lemon tree, which it's the image that you view uh, when it's picking the tree. And the text is stored in the resource file of the string resources. So text action, um, so text action is a type of text view. And then this is where the text action basically uh, is the you know, text view that's in the um, XML file. Um, and we got the um, lemon select string resource from the values folder string of XML. So here's the messages that are displayed and here's the names of those messages and so instead of hard coding the actual message which we could do but instead of hard coding it it's just easier to store it in a string resource file and uh, call it directly from the string resource okay and that I think is all that it had you do is just update this um, function, set view elements, and update the click lemon image. And then after you did that, it was all done. Um, okay. Yep. And it tells you exactly how to do it, basically. Uh, not exactly, but the way it says it, you can really figure it out pretty easily based on what you learned in use it, unit one. Uh, the set view elements method is responsible for updating the user interface on the app's state. The text and image should be updated with the values shown below uh, to match lemonade state. So again, you know, I was able to use basically the same when statement, you know, when lemonade state is this, you know, set the text to this, set the image to that. When squeeze state is, uh, lemonade state is squeeze set the text and image when lemonade state is drink set the text and image and when lemonade state is restart set the text and image okay it talks about how to use string resources um instead of just hard coding in when you're doing when you're setting the strings okay All right. Okay, next. And when you run it, it should function properly. So let me go ahead and just I'll run it um, on my emulator. So I was running it on my actual device, but I'll run it on the emulator right now. So you can see it on the screen. All right, so it starts up. It says select a lemon. So we clicked it. All right, click to choose the lemon, but I'm going to hold it to see how many we have left. It says zero left, so... Oh, there it goes. Um, click to drink your lemon. Start again. Okay, select lemon. One left. Okay. And it just goes, you know, changes the state, changes the text, you know, it works like it's intended to. Cool. 
That's it. So we played the app. Okay. Next. All right. So this is the part I didn't do yet. Test your app. You finished implementing the Lemonade app, but in a professional software development, simply writing code is rarely the last step. In addition to the application code, professional quality apps also include testing code that is run to verify that the code works as expected and that changes to the code don't introduce hmm. any bugs. A process called automatic testing. While teaching automated testing is beyond the scope of this project, the Lemonade app is bundled with some tests that help you verify that you implemented the project correctly. You can use this as a form of self-grading to see if you've passed all requirements and if any changes are needed to your app. What exactly is a test? Tests are simple pieces of code included in Android Studio that run a part of your app's code and can either pass or fail depending on whether or not the app's code behaves as expected. Typically, test failures messages will be specific to the tests in the examples below. The failing tests checks the contents of the text view. However, if you are unsure of what a test failure message means, you can paste part of the error into Google. Chances are someone has asked the same question before. So where do you go to find and run your app's test? The tests for the Lemonade app are found in the testing target. Target is just a software development term for a collection of classes that are bundled together. For example, the Lemonade app exists in a target called app, while the tests are exist in a target called Lemonade tests. While the Lemonade test target can get access code from the app target, they're completely separate and the app's code does not contain any of the testing code. When viewing the files in Android, view the test target will appear with the same package name. Okay. But with the Android tests in parentheses. So let's see if we can find the test directory. And it should be here somewhere. Yeah. Android. So if I just open that up a little bit. Okay. Lemonade, Android test. Okay. Here's lemonade test and base test. Okay, let's see which one it wants us to run first. When viewing the files in Android, the test target will appear with the same name. Yep, and we just looked at that over there. All right, there are also a few key terms to know when referring to testing code. Test suite, the target that includes all of your test cases. Test case, a class consisting of individual tests related to functionality, but the Lemonade app had just a single test case but larger apps often have many more. Test, a function that tests one specific thing. A test case can have multiple tests in your project. Test suit can have multiple test cases. Oof, that was a mouthful. Running your tests. To run your tests, you can do one of the following. For a single test, you can open up a test case class and click the green arrow in the left of the class declaration. You can then select run from the menu, and this will run the test case. Okay. Let's see. All right, so let's play it. Run Lemonade Tests. Test results. Three or four. Four, five, five of six, six of six. So 
So I think that means they all pass. Okay, and what did we test? We tested test squeezing lemon proceeds to drink. Test initial state. Cool. Um, test picking lemon proceeds to squeezing state. Test drinking juice proceeds to restart state. Tests restart proceeds to pick lemon state. Test squeeze count. Snack bars displayed. So basically, it's a way that we can test that what we think we programmed it to do actually does what we programmed it to do. Cool. Yeah. Android J unit. So they use this J unit for testing. Large test, limited test, space test, before setup. Test initial state. Okay. Initial state should be this, and it was. And it tests the states on each state of the way and make sure that these value correspond to the values that it has when it runs it. That's pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. Um, often, you'll only want to run a single test. For example, if there's one failing test and the other tests pass, you can just run the single test, so just as you would the entire test case. All right. Okay. Results of running a test are shown in the Run tab on the pane on the left. You can see a list of failing tests, if any. Failing tests are marked with red exclamations. Passing tests are marked with green check marks. Okay. If a test fails, a text output provides information to help you fix the problem. Okay. Next. Optional. Share your app. Um, after you've finished enjoying the many glasses of lemonade, take a screenshot of your favorite screen and share it on Twitter. I don't have Twitter, or I would. Okay. All right. Unit one is done. Uh, quiz. Let's take the quiz. Uh, which of the following is an example of a class? A car class that has a make and model that can be driven. A flower class that has a scent. A puppy class that has a breed, weight, age, and bark. A shopping cart class that has a size and cart value that can hold items. A song class that has lyrics. All of them. Which of the following is the difference between a class and an instance? You can think of a class as a blueprint and an instance as the actual thing. All right, a class is like an partial partial plan for a bridge, and the Golden Great Bridge is an instance. Class is defining category of things, while instances are defining their properties. No. Uh, you can create multiple instances. For a class, but you can't create classes from instances. That's not a good one either. For, the for each of the following types of information, select whether it should be part of a class or an instance. Information about the properties shared by all things belonging to the class, such as number of sides, number of legs, and that it has a color. That should go to class. The specifics about a property, such as the specific color of the thing. So that's an instance. True or false, every main activity in Android must have a main function. False. Which of the following is not a way for creating a comments? This. This. Uh, which of the following statements about conditional statements are true? Conditional statement is a way for you to set up a condition and ensure that the code following it is only executed if that condition is met. 
A conditional statement does not require any keywords. That's not true. A conditional statement should only be used with integers. No, that's not true. A conditional statement can be used within functions to return output based on conditions defined by the function. That's true. What is a good reason to add your comments to code? Probably all of the above. Okay, int range, int boolean, if else, one, boom. All right, and that is a good place to stop. I'll see you in unit two.